Hey guys, Tim here. Today we're going to do an unboxing of the Cooler Master Gemini 2 M4. This is for, in the background, you can see the uh, MATX A8 build I've been working on. I decided um, I really did want, I, I just power tested the board, <laughs> and that fan is so horribly loud. I decided I did want to pick up a low profile uh, cooler for this case. Uh, it's definitely needed. So we'll see how this fits in there. Um, we're not going to be using a uh, a very beefy video card in here, so I'm not wor real worried about clearance on the video card. But at the end of the day, you know, I just wanted something quieter with a little bit better cooling performance. So we got this. So it is low profile. It is uh, 59 millimeters or 2.3 inches tall, which is almost 100 millimeters shorter than the one I was trying to fit in there. It is socket 11, or sorry, <laughs> 2011, which if you're putting this on a 2011, you're doing something wrong. Um, 1366, 1156, 1155, 775. It's also socket FM1, AM3+, plus, AM3, and AM2. If there's anything interesting on the back here, it is super low profile for direct contact heat pipes, suitable for HTPCs, newly developed slim fan, we'll, we'll show you that they definitely have a unique fan blade uh, design, but other than that, nothing, you know, nothing too crazy. So let's go ahead and uh, get her open. I, of course, don't have my keys on me and apparently don't have my knife on me. Shows you how long it's been since I've done an unboxing. Totally unprepared. Let's see if a screwdriver will work. I doubt it, but it's always worth a try. There's Hacksaw the box open. Ooh, and get all that out of there. So, on the back of this big old brick stuff, we have the heat pipes. I notice they're direct contact heat pipes. Uh, the low profile, and you notice it is quite a bit bigger than the stock fan. So, you know, a lot more heat sink there. Um, we'll get back to this in a second. Inside we have just a piece of uh, paper to stop the bottom of the heatsink from rubbing. We have your M4 user manual. Keep this handy, or the internet, because with all the different mounting brackets it, it is a little um, user intensive. So this is nice to see, by the way, not everybody does this, but it looks like at least one of the baggies is labeled. So this is the LGA 1120. And then we have the big bag of stuff, which is not labeled, but should be pretty self-explanatory. The big, the big old bracket, that's gonna be your AMD bracket. And then your small cross bracket, which is this guy, which has, um, I'm assuming, more adapter pieces everywhere here. These are your Intel brackets. And I believe this is as well. Uh, not labeled, and I haven't looked up the instructions. One of these is very likely like the AM3 uh, bracket, but usually Intel uses this kind of design. Whereas most of the AMD boards I've done lately just have this big back plate. So, also nice to see um, they did put an anti conductive uh, coating on the back plate. So, when you put it on the back of your board, you're not going to short it out. Do not install this direction. And also a little tightening wrench. And the little tightening wrench is so, and I'm not going to open this bag because I don't want to lose the nuts, but. The little nuts there and the socket are what the tightening wrench is for. We also have 
some rubber grommets, nice to see, and Cooler Master Compound. I'm not exactly sure if they use their own or if they purchase it from somebody else. I will be using a Noctua Compound. I pretty much stick with that because I know the performance is consistent. And for me, it isn't about always the best performing compound. I tend to like the most consistent compound. So just depends. You're doing a lot of CPUs. I'd rather have consistency than one that's really good and five that I have to take off and reapply compound to. So here we go. So it is definitely a slim fan. Right. And it has a nice um, uh, kind of a curved blade to help reduce uh, fan noise. And I believe, let's see if they have an arrow on the fan here. Because there's two ways. Well, yeah, they don't. I'd have to look up which. My guess is this is going to be blowing down from the way the fans are going. It should be. Um, some fans are marked, it would just be easier to know, but a lot of times on these coolers, uh, the air goes, you know, comes in from the top and goes down, and then out across the board, which is actually a very efficient way to get some chipset cooling for free, um, especially with, you know, these AMD boards where, you know, you're heavily relying on the chipsets to help improve performance. Um, you know, you're going to get a little, a little side cooling on the RAM. You're just going to get a little more airflow on the board than something that, you know, pushes straight through. So, not a big deal, especially not in this system, which, you know, the AM2 parts don't get very warm. So, I mean, not, not like the, or sorry, the FM2 parts. The AM3 parts get ridiculously hot, and the new Haswells get even hotter than the Ivy Bridges. So, I don't know that, you know, if you're, do, if you're using a Haswell... For a build, you're using an Ivy Bridge for like a media center PC build. I would definitely try to fit something beefier than this in there for cooling. Um, unless you're, you know, if you're not going to do any overclocking and you're just going to run kind of a warm system, that's okay. For here, I, you know, I want to try to overclock the PC because, you know, if we can overclock the A8 chip, you're just going to get better graphics performance. And that's really what this chip is all about. It's not really about, you know, processing horsepower. It's about getting you know, the APU working at the best reliability possible and at the highest frequencies possible. So that's Tim, or this is Tim, for Timmy Tech TV. Guys, sorry it's been a while. Uh, I'm going to post a little uh, Timmy Twin Tips episode and show you guys, like, what the heck has been going on, why I haven't been doing very many videos. Um, hopefully, any of you that have uh, kids will get a kick out of it. If not, uh, just totally ignore it. But it's... Pretty amazing what my two-year-old son can do at two. So, this is Tim for Timmy Tech TV. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. Check out the uh, Corsair 900D giveaway that I'm doing with Linus Tech Tips, and we'll see you next time.